Robot Talk is the podcast that sits down with robot enthusiasts from around the world and asks them the questions you always wanted answered. Like, is that a robot security guard? And how does that thing work? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Robot Talk. I'm your host, Claire Asher. And this week's episode is all about industrial mobile robots and how these versatile, autonomous machines can be applied to a range of challenges, from inspection and maintenance to logistics and security. But first, I'd like to remind you that you can send in your questions for my future guests, either by contacting us on social media, we're at RobotTalkPod on all the socials, or you can submit questions via our website by going to robottalk.org. So, without further ado, let's get on with this week's interview. I recently had a great conversation with Rafael Lopez from Robotnik Automation, all about mobile robots, logistics, and inspection. Today, I'm talking to Rafael Lopez, Managing Director at Robotnik Automation, a Spanish company specialising in autonomous and collaborative industrial mobile robots. Hi, Rafa. Great to have you on Robot Talk. Hi, I'm Claire. Nice to talk to you. So you co-founded Robotnik in 2002 um, with the aim of designing and building industrial and service robots. So what inspired you to take this entrepreneurial leap? Yeah, you're right. So in uh, 2002, we started Robonic. It, uh, we were two um, guys by then. It was uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Roberto Guzman, and myself, uh, the one who, who started it. Um, he was a professor by that time, professor of robotics, and I had just finished my degree in telecommunications engineering. So then I had a background on electronics and, and uh, communications and uh, wireless uh, technologies and so. So we initially started uh, Robotnik with the aim of serving the market of uh, industrial automation and industrial uh, robotics. Uh, but then uh, just uh, little by little and uh, step by step, uh, we move uh, towards uh, mobile robotics and uh, mobile handling. Mm-hmm. We we had a chance to 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 part in uh, in different uh, research projects, and uh, then we start uh, growing basically. Mm. And uh, over the last twenty years, so we have seen the the company growth uh, thanks to to continuous efforts and, and hard work of of, uh, of all of us. And it's worth to mention as well that since uh, last year, actually since uh, January two thousand twenty three, we belong to Georgi, to the Anti Robotics Group, mm. which is. Uh, a German uh, group, a German ecosystem that brings uh, together some service robotics uh, companies uh, with expertise in, in hardware and, and software. So to to try to bring uh, a, a complete uh, robotics experience into the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's fantastic um, that you've you've been so successful. Obviously, a lot of startups don't succeed, so it must it must feel wonderful to to see your company kind of grow and blossom in the way that it has yeah actually we started too so we are more than 80 now so it's uh yeah yeah it's uh we are really proud of it and it must be quite um quite a a kind of scary and also i guess exciting thing to to start your own company yeah, it is. But uh, you know what happens by that time? I, we we were young. We were uh, yeah, nothing to lose. <laughs> yes. You know, we, I mean, it's uh, it was not a, really a, a big investment. Uh, we had not 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 much money then, mm-hmm. but we asked for some investment partners, uh, and uh, at that time, and um, so I would say that it was uh, not so risky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like like twenty twenty one years ago. Yeah. So you know, it's. Uh, uh, sometimes and you you look at the past and you see all the things we've done and uh, because it was really actually a garage we, the place in which we started mm. and we kind of a nice and beautiful and huge building right now so <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, yeah but it's a lot of effort a lot of work yeah um, underneath uh, until, until we, we we achieved this um, 
this point in the way we are now. Sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and so over the last two decades, um, just over two decades, uh, Robotnik yeah. has developed robots for a huge range of different applications from logistics to security. Uh, what are some of your flagship robots? Yeah, so um, we have a, it's a large uh, portfolio of robots, but uh, one of the, of the flagship uh, robots in terms of, um, of those that uh, have been on the market uh, the longest time would be the Summit XL, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, probably the first uh, real uh, marketable solution uh, we had. And uh, it's not discontinued. Uh, so it's a, a general purpose platform developed to operate in uh, indoor and outdoor environments. And uh, it's true that uh, we have, uh, I mean, we've been enhancing it and, and improving uh, this uh, robot uh, during a lot of uh, during many years. But uh, I would say it's uh, the flagship one. It mm -hmm. um, can carry loads of up to 65 kilograms. It uh, run up to three uh, meters per second um, speed mm -hmm. and uh, can um, navigate autonomously, uh, can be operated. And uh, this uh, product in which uh, we have also based some uh, new uh, robots that are currently on the market as well. So I would say we have, we have other ones, it's uh, RV Buggy, which is a bigger one for outdoor application and heavy loads or the RV Theron, which is a more uh, aimed to indoor uh, logistics and indoor transport to the industry segment. But yeah, probably the, the Summit Excel is the the one I'm personally most proud of. Mm -hmm, sure. And can you kind of briefly describe what the Summit XL looks like? Yeah, it's um, a four-wheeled uh, robot. If you think of this uh, small remote uh, control cars, mm. which uh, the, you usually play with when you're a kid. <laughs> yeah. So it's a bit larger. So it, it's about uh, 50 kilograms, like uh, 60 centimeters and um, half a meter long and uh, in height as well, half a meter height. And mm. um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, plenty of uh, different sensors. You can mount on it. Um, you can mount uh, GPS uh, stations, uh, cameras, pan tilt, uh, zoom, uh, video systems, uh, um, and of course, uh, plenty of uh, lasers for uh, security, for navigation, and for localization, for positioning indoors, outdoors. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, it's um, it's a Ford um, motor uh, robot, and uh, yeah. Plenty of capacity with autonomy of more than eight hours. Fantastic. Yeah, it sounds very versatile. Is there a particular use case you see this robot being applied to most often, or is it is it really varied? No, it's a, it's a very varied, but it's uh, usually used for for gathering information on the environment, you know, gathering data, and uh, it doesn't matter if data is uh, I don't know three D. Um, cloud of the environment of the data is uh, the heat temperature mm. so if it's, if it's heat if it's temperature if it's uh, humidity it doesn't matter at the end it can carry a lot of um, uh, loads and devices so it's uh, it's more um, an issue of what you mount on it which is the which is the, the final uh, intention mm. of the application you want to do with the robot rather than a concrete segment yeah And so you've also been involved in um, several European research and development projects where mobile robotics has played a key role for logistics. Um, can you tell me a little bit about some of these projects and their results? Yes, sure. Since uh, we did 2004, yeah. approximately, we have participated in more than uh, 60 R&D projects, wow. most of them the European framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, currently like... Uh, 25, 30 in progress. Actually, the, the R&D department in uh, Robonic is uh, the biggest one. There's nearly 20 employees there. And uh, basically, this project provides us uh, with the resources to be able to uh, continue research into some uh, cutting-edge technologies and, and uh, scenarios in which to test um, our robots mm. uh, that we would otherwise not be able to access. And so 
to name a few, I mean, it's been a, a huge number of them, but I can talk, for example, about the, especially in logistics, about the um, HR recycler, which um, was addressing the development of a kind of hybrid human robot recycling plant for electrical and electronic equipment. Okay. And uh, yeah, what we usually do here is to be the hardware provider for the solution. And in this particular case, we used one of our autonomous manipulators, which is the RV Kairos Plus, which is able to pick uh, and place small items. And um, when we applied it uh, in order to be able to grab uh, disassembled components from uh, different workbenches in a, in a industry mm-hmm. and uh, transport it um, either to the final destination for the processing or for a uh, a uh, final processing area for the packaging station, or uh, I mean, it's a kind of example of, of uh, this uh, type of R and D uh, mm-hmm. project we, we we perform. But there are many others. I mean, currently we have uh, one of the latest one is called AI Prism, which is um, the aim is to provide kind of ecosystem for human robot collaboration and uh, cooperation in manufacturing work environments. Mm. Um, so at the end, it's it's not giving direct results to the market, but it's a way to to enhance um, our products and and to create uh, these new applications and the new the new uh, technologies that will come in in the next years. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds really interesting and varied what you what you're working on, and I think yeah. <laughs> the R and D department sounds like it must be a fun place to work. <laughs> yes, they think so too, but they they are. Sometimes uh, quite um, overloaded with work, sure. <laughs> yeah. but uh, but yeah, it's not only about uh, logistics. We have, uh, you know, the, the scope of the areas in which uh, robotics can perform something. It's uh, it's a uh, huge. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, we're talking about uh, inspection. We're talking about uh, maintenance, uh, logistics, uh, the agriculture, last mile delivery, autonomous manipulation, um, screwing, tightening. You know, I mean, it's like. It's so broad mm-hmm. that uh, there's always uh, usually, and, and likely, there's always an, an area in which we can uh, try and, and test our, our robots from the R&D perspective. Yeah, since I've been making this podcast, I've been amazed at how many different areas robots are being applied to yeah. and how much synergy there is in many ways between different application areas. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just sometimes I think that we really don't know uh, which which will be the end for this? I mean, probably there's there's there's, there's no any, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. And with the introduction and the boom of the with the AI in the in the robotic industry, mm-hmm. which is um, opening many doors and and uh, making it easier the the programming and the access to the to the cooperation between uh, humans and and robots. And I mean, I'm not sure when when uh, it will if it will be an end. I mean, I'm sure that will, will not be an end. Yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, there's uh, there's a uh, Every day and every week, uh, like new areas in which as you see uh, robots uh, doing things and, and doing activities and making tasks, which uh, we probably had never imagined like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so another real application that Robotnik is involved in is inspection and maintenance. Um, mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. are some of the biggest challenges in this sector and, and what robotic innovations can help to overcome them? Yeah, so... Um, Actually, this uh, has to do with um, the goal of doing like uh, frequent inspections, uh, so identify um, uh, potential problems and uh, reducing the, the, the risks, uh, the inherent uh, risks. To give you an example, um, we are using uh, nowadays uh, an upgraded version of the Summit Excel, which was the robot mm-hmm. I mentioned before, which is called uh, Arbit Watcher. Uh, we are using it uh, to enhance this uh, surveillance and uh, security in electrical substations. Okay. So basically, this mobile platform is used to perform uh, monitoring, patrolling, um, some overheating detection, um, alarm transmission, or event triggering. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's it's not the the word that which is usually patrolling around the area, the one who has to 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 do this kind of dangerous or or, or sometimes even do job. So mm-hmm. it's uh, so it can be. Uh, Quietly sit on the on a, on a desk, just uh, receiving what the robot is uh, transmitting, and uh, yeah, basically and, and communicating in, in real time with this uh, relevant personnel. So this is one of the areas in one of the markets that uh, we'll see that uh, 
that there will be a, a good big boom in the in the next years for this inspection and, and maintenance um, scenarios. Mm-hmm. I guess this means that the the person who you just mentioned who used to have to go in and, and do all these checks themselves is now having to learn to work with robots in a way that they perhaps never imagined their job would involve. Yes, exactly, exactly. But but I mean, it's not that uh, at all that the robot is uh, is replacing this person. It's rather mm-hmm. than that this person is having a, a more uh, um, specialized and in, in a, in a better job rather than than going and and. and and just uh, measuring the the temperature of a bulb or or wherever it can be, like uh, really uh, giving the context to that uh, uh, measures instead of doing the measures uh, by himself mm-hmm. or so. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So it sounds like from the measurements you're describing that they're quite um, like sector specific. So the robot would have to be adapted depending on where it's going to be deployed. Yes, yes, that's uh, why it's so important. Uh, in our case, not to close uh, the robot for a specific and very concrete uh, application, rather to offer it as a kind of a general purpose uh, platform in which you mm-hmm. can mount uh, different uh, sensors uh, depending on the on the concrete applications you wanna um, uh, you wanna tackle. So, so for example, if you in this uh, electrical substations, you probably might need some type of visual um, device that needs to or a thermal camera, for example, that you might not need mm. in another application in which you don't need to measure uh, temperature, for example. Yeah, I mean, this comes back to what we were talking about at the beginning about the kind of the versatility of the robots you design and how you can just mount different sensors and different mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. appendages yeah. <laughs> yeah. on them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that that's uh, probably what makes us uh, different from from other um, developers that uh, we provide. By general purpose uh, mobile uh, platforms, so they can be adapted at the end for the for its concrete application. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the people I've interviewed on this podcast who work in industry are far more focused on one really specific mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. application area. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to hear about this kind of yeah. more um, diverse, uh, broader approach. Yeah, yeah. What we're trying to do like that with this, um, since we entered into the into ERG, uh, we are trying to do this uh, with this concrete uh, sector of inspection and maintenance. But uh, we keep on having the the rest of our portfolio like you know, open to be to be uh, customized mm-hmm. for concrete um, things. I mean, and and, and, and <laughs> applications and, yeah. and and activities and sectors. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, yeah, I, I will uh, look forward to seeing uh, where Robotnik's uh, research goes next. Um, Rafa, it's been great speaking to you today. I've been chatting to Rafael Lopez, Managing Director at Robotnik Automation. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy Robot Talk, please do share the podcast, subscribe, and leave a review to let us know what you think. And make sure you check out our social media channels to see a photo of Robotnik's Summit XL autonomous mobile robot, which Raphael and I talked about. We're at Robot Talk Pod on all the socials. Next week, I'll be speaking to Maria Jose Galvez Trigo from Cardiff University, all about human robot interaction, machine learning, and accessibility. Until then, I've been Claire Asher, and this has been Robot Talk. Robot Talk is brought to you by the Hamlin Centre, Imperial College London.